Hello, this is Marcy Silverberg, and I created this video in order to teach you a few things about your pelvic floor. So I'm going to be teaching you how to work your pelvic floor, but before I do that, I'm going to teach you something really important, which is to work on relaxing and lengthening the pelvic floor. So a really well-functioning pelvic floor is going to be able to do both things, both relax and contract. So if you think about my bicep and how it works to contract my um, my elbow, I also need to completely lengthen my elbow and that bicep needs to get really long in order to get a good contraction. So if the muscle doesn't completely lengthen and I'm only generating tension through this range of motion, that's not gonna be as effective as if I were to get truly long and then contract. And that's the reason why the first thing that I'm gonna work with you on is relaxation of the pelvic floor. And the way we're gonna do that is by breathing and by a little bit of mobilization. And this is also really important for those of you that are getting ready for labor. But it's really good for, not even good, really important for anyone who's working on a well-functioning pelvic floor. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna take this ball, this is called a gorgeous ball, and it's a little bit deflated. So it's about halfway inflated or 80% inflated maybe. Or if you have anything kind of like this at home, I'm gonna sit on it, okay? So I'm just gonna put it right here where the pelvic floor muscles are, kind of in between my sits bones, cross my legs, and this is how I'm doing it. Now there are a lot of variations for how you could do this. So some people are uncomfortable being in this open leg position and they'll do this on a chair. And you can do that. You could change the surface if this was too uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I could pad the surface that I'm on. And I'm gonna be on the ball and I'm just feeling how this feels on my muscles. And then I could just rock my pelvis a little bit side to side, up and down. I'm doing a little pelvic tilt as I do this and then even little circles. Now this is really a good way to warm up. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on my muscles. So if I could withstand a little bit more pressure to really get in there and relax the muscles, then I will do that. So uh, I'm gonna remove this ball because I'm ready for more. And I'm gonna add this ball. This is called a uh, yoga tune-up ball, or um, you could use any kind of ball that's like this. It has a little bit of give to it and I'm gonna sit on it. And to make it even more pressure, I'm gonna put it on top of a yoga block. So the yoga block elevates me a little bit, and then I take the ball, I'm gonna scoot back a bit, and I'm gonna sit on top of the ball. I put it right in the perineum area, so I'm not over any orifices, either the, at the vagina side or over by the rectal side. I'm just right in between there, and I'm sitting on this. Okay, and then what I could do is just take some nice deep breaths while I'm on it. And as I breathe, I'm working on really elongating my breath. Nice big inhale. I could put my hands on my rib cage here. So right underneath the breast, hands on the rib cage, a little compression there. And I'm breathing in and feeling my breath move into the rib cage. And as it does that, it's going to allow the pelvic floor muscle to drop down. So I can even kind of get in touch with the feeling of breathing down into the, into the ball. And just do that for a little bit, okay? If this was too uncomfortable, I could maybe put a pillow over it or a yoga mat over it. So just finding just that right tension there, okay? So this is the self-mobilization of the pelvic floor with balls. And then after that, we're gonna follow it up with a stretch. Any kind of like deep squat stretch is going to help stretch out the pelvic floor. So my favorite one to do is this one. It looks like child's pose, but it's not because you're here and you're going to rock back. Now, when you do that child's pose, yoga pose, you just kind of lean back in any way. This exercise is called a rock back. So notice as I do it, there's just a little bit of a curve to my low back and I'm going to lean back and keep that curve. Okay, so I'm not allowing my pelvis to tuck under like this. I'm really holding it. I can see it really well in the camera and I get deep in there and hold at the end where I can't go back any further without letting this happen. And that's the stretch of the pelvic floor. I can relax there and take those real deep breaths down into the pelvic area. And that is stretching of the pelvic floor. 
And now we're gonna go into some contractions of the pelvic floor. Okay, so here we go with that piece. First thing that I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna get myself in really nice alignment. Okay, so I've got my ribs stacked over my pelvis. My, my ribs aren't kind of jutting forward, they're back. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stay connected to my breath. So again, the hands on the rib cage, taking some nice deep breaths, kind of in on a four count and breathing out on a six count. Now you keep breathing as I talk you through this. Okay, so your hands are here. You're gonna take a nice deep breath in your nose on a four count, out on a six count. Now my hand here is gonna be like a visualization for you of your pelvic floor muscles. So as you take that nice deep breath in, the muscles relax. And as you exhale, I want you to think about gathering the ends of those pelvic floor muscles and squeezing and then lifting up during your exhalation. Inhale, relax down. As you exhale, think about closing off the openings or stopping the flow of urine and then pulling up into the pelvic cavity and relax. You keep going as I talk. So as you do this, there's two elements. There's the squeeze element, and then there's the lift element, and you're gonna do both. And as you lift up, you might even feel, it's like a bottom up contraction. So you might feel some contraction of the lower abdominals, or feel like your belly button is pulling in and up as you exhale, and that's perfect, because the muscles are connected, okay? So that's contracting your pelvic floor, and you're working on the endurance, because you're working on holding it during the exhalation. We're gonna do one more thing, and that's contracting your pelvic floor for power. So when you do that kind of same thing that you're in good alignment, and you're taking your nice deep breath in and you're working on the exhalation, and this time I want you to think about doing a more powerful squeeze and then full let go. Powerful squeeze, stopping the flow of urine, pulling up, and then fully letting go. And when you do this, you're getting the muscles to turn on quickly and strongly, but not for a really long period of time. So this is the kind of force closure that we need if you're someone that leaks when you <coughs> cough, sneeze, or do something that has an increased downward pressure, and you're working on really quickly being able to contract those muscles that hold the sphincters closed so that no urine escapes, and then you relax. Okay, so that's your video. We talked about relaxing the pelvic floor, and then we talked about contractions of the pelvic floor, and you could do contractions of your pelvic floor in lots of positions. You could be in a kneeling position like I am right now. You could be sitting, you could be standing, you could be in a quadruped all fours position. Moms, you could be holding your baby when you do this, okay? You wanna work on both contracting and relaxing. They're both equally important. And you wanna be doing about 30 to 80 repetitions per day. You do not want to be doing hundreds of repetitions per day. That is too much. And you should feel your symptoms start to improve if you're working on this because you're having symptoms of leaking. If you're having um, pain for any reason, then it might not be the right exercise for you. And I would encourage you to stop and speak with your pelvic health professional. Thanks for listening to my video.